Hello and welcome to my September reading plans. In my last few videos, I've been contemplating on whether or not I want to make a TBR, but I decided TBRs are fun, but I need to not hold myself to such rigidity with them. So, you know, the idea here is if I get to it, I get to it. If not, if not. But we're still here to have fun and talk about the books we want to read. And I actually have some solid goals of I really want to work through my physical TBR. But alas, if I need some Kindle books in between, I do that too. I do that too. So trying to guess what my mood will be. But if my mood doesn't fit the books, that's okay as well. I'm also going to try and be beefing up my content a little bit in the months of September and October. I just have so many ideas for like fall videos and it's such a great time of year. So I am going to be trying to stick to posting it twice a week for September and October. We will see how that goes, if that's manageable. One time a week is pretty manageable with my job, so let's see if we can do two. But I think it'll be fun to post some more, but I probably won't consistently post twice a week after these two months of fall content just because I think I can get burnt out that way but I think when there is something coming up that I have a lot to talk about it would be fun to kind of you know post a little bit more for a little while then like chill back just trying to balance wanting my channel to grow with also needing to be able to just enjoy my everyday life so that those are my thoughts for what is coming up on my channel but in the meantime, let's get into my September TBR. So first and foremost, we have a book that I already finished in September. I'm pretty much filming this the day before I'm posting it, so you guys know it's already September, but I finished it in September, so it counts, so it should still go on the TBR. Here we have House of Roots and Ruin by Erin A. Craig, which is the sequel to House of Salt and Sorrow. So this book takes place, I believe, 12 years after the first book, and we're following the youngest sister, who was very small, in the first book and now she is 17, 18 and she is basically confined to the manor where she lives with her oldest sister and her family and she really wants to go out there and experience life but her older sister Camille tells Verity no like you have to stay here and she finds out that the reason for that is because she can see ghosts and when she finds out about that she decides to run away she was offered a commission in the province of Bloem which are the people of the petals so they're all about like flowers and things like that and she was offered to paint a portrait of the Duke's son and so she goes to this manor she runs away knowing that she has these powers and she gets entwined with the sun and things just start taking a turn for the really creepy. I really enjoyed this one. I wanted to throw the book across the room at the last line but I found out that there's another book coming out in the series so I'm excited because I, I need more of this story. Next let's move on to the audiobooks that I will be reading this month. I try to leave audiobooks pretty open because I only use Libby so I kind of have to read things as they come in if I plan for specific things and then my hold runs out or my loan runs out or my hold doesn't come in then it kind of sucks so I am pretty open with my audiobook TBR and also like I'm not always in the mood for an audiobook so if I'm not in the mood that day I don't force myself to read it so this is the current audiobook that I'm reading which is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix and oh my god this book is so it's so creepy and I gotta tell you guys a story after I tell you the synopsis <laughs> but it involves haunted puppets and that is terrifying. That is terrifying. So we follow Louise and her parents have just died and she has to go to her hometown of Charleston and basically get the house ready to sell but there's tension with her brother. He doesn't want to sell it and their mom was a doll and puppet collector. And you know sometimes sometimes houses they don't want to be sold. So I'm about 70% of the way through but this book centers around haunted dolls and puppets and I was listening to it in my car on my commute and I was getting the chills because it's so creepy. It's so creepy and coming up the like um, incline of the parking garage as I was going down was this guy with a muffler on his car and he had a Chucky doll hanging out of the roof and this is as I'm reading about these haunted dolls. And I literally, I almost jumped out of my skin. I was like, oh my god, Chucky is coming for me, speeding up at 
such a high speed and like it's so loud and obnoxious and I literally thought I was hallucinating. I'm like the dolls are coming to life and they're going to come and get me. But no, it was real and then I saw him again later on my way home and I was like, why did I see this person twice in one day? Once was enough and yeah, I'm terrified of puppets and dolls now. Thank you very much, Grady Hendrix. So after that, the other audiobook that I think that I am going to pick up is I have been wanting to read more Riley Sager. So I have The Only One Left, which is his newest one, and I just got that one in. And since that's his newest one, it has like a long hold line, and I've been on hold for a while, so now that I have it, I'm going to read it. And here, I'll show you. Only one left. Mm -hmm. And it apparently is like a Lizzie Borden-esque story. Oh, so it takes place in Maine and it's about this family of murders that takes place in 1929. And most people assume that the daughter, who's 17 at the time, her name is Lenora, they think that she did it. But the police were never able to prove it and basically since then she's never set foot outside of the matter. And then in 1983 we have like a home aide that comes to help Lenora, who's now in her 70s, and she makes a deal with Kit, the home aide, saying I want to tell you everything but after strokes she can only like communicate by typing on an old typewriter. So I mean this just seems so spooky and scary and perfect for fall. I'm like a little annoyed that there is a heat wave this week because I want it to feel like fall. I don't want it to feel like summer anymore but alas. Next we're moving on to my Kindle books. So these are a few books that I already read on my Kindle so I'm putting them on my TBR so that they count because I read them in September. I always like to have things going on like a few different um, platforms at once because I tend to, I don't know, read more things when I have different platforms going. Also look at how cute my Kindle is. She's adorable. Okay, so first up is Ruling Seek Dand by Victoria Aveline. Actually, hold on one second. Okay, here we have the cover for Ruling Seekdan by Victoria Aveline. This is the seventh book in the Clacanian series, which I have been obsessed with all year. It is this planet that these girls find themselves kind of crash landed on, and there the men outnumber the women, and their race is kind of dying, so all the men have to go to husband school to like be the best husbands ever. So yeah, now we have our girl Sophia and she was captured by this king in a different city and she kind of has to navigate her way through this like very, it's like a very um, like rigid society and they all live like on the side of this hill and their culture is very different than the other books and it's kind of like the cat and mouse between her and this king and I loved it. I am obsessed with this series. It might be my favorite alien romance series and this new book in the series might be my favorite. Although choosing Theo, the first one like that, is still like an all-time favorite so I don't know, it's really hard for me to choose. Alien romances are really good when you just want something where you know the guy is gonna like worship the crown that the woman wa walks on is like usually faded mates and like they're just so fun with really unique world building and you can read them fast. They're just like a great great for them. Okay, then the next book is Alien Protector's Mate by Melissa Emerald, and we follow these women, they're abducted, and then they kind of crash land on this conservation planet, and we have these men that have wings and tails, and they're all sparkly, and they have to like protect the women that are in this temple, and so they've never seen a woman. They just get their sons like from the woman in this temple, and so like obviously the first woman that the, our main guy Rin sees, he's like, this is my mate, and it's the story of them, and if you just want like sparkly himbo aliens, it's great. It's a lot of fun. Then... This is the book that I'm currently reading, which is Claimed by the Horde King, and this is the second book in the um, Horde Kings of the Dakar series, which if you like the Dothraki from Game of Thrones, this is kind of what this is essentially based on. Um, we have this planet of Dakar where we have these Dothraki, not Dothraki, we have these hordes, the Doth car I don't know it's really cool because the author like has them have like their own language and everything and it it's really fun um, but basically humans have like settled on this planet and they're all like poor and starving and then we have these hordes and they you know honor and worship the land so we have Nell and she's hunting to survive but they're not allowed to hunt because it goes against like the laws of these people um, so she's basically claimed by this horde king after she breaks the laws um, and he was gonna maybe execute her, but then he feels like, drawn to her. 
so it's it's just like good alien time so then the last kindle book that i'm gonna put on my tbr but who knows what else i'm gonna end up reading this month just depending on my mood is when i have an arc four and it's the third book in a series and that is heart of the shadow king which is the third and final book in the Bride of the Shadow King trilogy. This is really cool. We have Ferrain. She's a human and she's kind of like the outcast of her family because her magical gifts actually make her ill. So she's like very ill around magic. And then we have Vor. He is the um, trolled, which are troll people. They're like rock fae. Um, and they live in this like underground kingdom and basically he like has come to make a deal with the human king and him and Ferrain hit it off but then like because she's the outcast like she like really shouldn't be the one that he like picks to marry but then something happens and I don't want to give away too much more but it's a really cool concept. I love the concept of like magic um, manifesting as a disability and I think it's very well explored in here. The underground like rock world is so cool. I've enjoyed the first two books in the series a lot and I can't wait to see what happens in the conclusion of this trilogy. Okay so and now as we approach more fall weather I think feel like September and October are just like my main time to read like spooky fall things and I'm just gonna lean into it fully this year. So I have like a pile of books that I want to read because another goal of mine is to actually read the books that I buy. So we all um, in the book internet know that this could be a problem sometimes, that you just buy things and don't read them. But I really, really want to try to just make sure that I'm curating my collection of books that I want to read and I read them and I enjoy them and that's the goal, right? I don't think I'm setting myself up for failure because a lot of these books are already talked about. I already am in the middle of or have already read because I've just been doing a lot of reading this weekend. I feel good about it. I feel like I can capture this and like I said I want to do more fall content so hopefully I can do some vlogs around these books. Alright the first one I'm going to talk about is Where Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hanna and this one is like a horror and it is like botanical horror which is like my favorite subgenre of horror I guess. I don't really know if it's a subgenre but I just like love when there's like plants growing out of eyes and like creepy body plant horror type things. So this is a supernatural thriller about an eerie town where the sunflowers whisper secrets and the land hungers for blood. So because it's about sunflowers, I feel like this is a good like transition late summer, early fall kind of horror book because it's still got like that sunflower element. So this town basically has like these endless sunflower fields and it's known for all of these women that go missing. And then three women go missing and no one is surprised except their daughters really want to know what happened because all three women that went missing were mothers. And then the wind kicks up a terrible secret at their mother's memorial and now all four girls are kind of forced to confront all of the secrets and lies. I don't know, I just like love this kind of like YA horror thriller kind of vibe and I've been looking for more books in this genre so I'm definitely gonna read this one and I was supposed to buddy read this with Keely when she was here in April and I never did so Keely this is for you because I suck sorry but yeah I'm excited about this one and I think this is probably going to be the next physical book that I start after my little alien excursion okay so next let's get into two books that I bought recently that I want to make sure that I read and so hopefully all the books that I'm bringing in as in buying and they arrive at my house like I can read them within like a month or two I think would be a cool goal to try to maintain. So the first one that I just got is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Marer and I got the cool red sprayed edges edition and it says um, it has this little frog in the corner that says help and that is me. Um, so this is actually based off of like a TikTok series where the author was kind of like acting out what would happen if like a a villain needed an assistant and so it's like a fantasy rom-com yes yes there's like a little assistant wanted thing and it says assistant wanted notorious high-ranking villain seeks loyal level-headed assistant for unsuspecting office duties supporting staff for random mayhem and terror and other dark things in general discretion a must excellent benefits so i think this is just gonna be like really fun kind of campy fantasy and I am here for it. I'm so excited. The next new release that I have that I cannot wait to get to is Foxglove by Adeline Grace. You guys know Belladonna by Adeline Grace was 
literally one of my favorite books of last year and i'm so excited for this sequel um this again kind of has this like botanical horror theme going on we follow Signa, and she's kind of been passed around from relative to relative her whole life and she has a secret and the secret is that she can like speak to death and this kind of manifests the closer she gets to death and so you know um, in Belladonna she ingests the Belladonna berries in order to speak to death. So we have all of this that has happened and now this book is going to focus more on Signa and Blythe, her cousin. Um, that, you know, when all the drama went down in Belladonna, she was at this place called Thorn Grove, and it was kind of like a murder mystery with gothic fantasy, and it was just so fun. I loved it, and with very beautiful prose. And so this book, I think, is going to be focusing not only on death, but also fate, and these are like the kind of godlike creatures in this world, and it's like Regency, fantasy, botanical horror, just a mixture of everything that I love and I'm so 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 excited for this one. So now we have some releases that I think are perfect for fall that I bought last year and never read and I'm gonna bully myself into reading them this fall. Okay so first up we have Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. Ava Reed is an author that I know when I read their stuff I will love it. I, I know I'm gonna be obsessed but I haven't read it yet. They've also um, written uh, The Wolf and the Woodsman and they have a study in drowning coming out soon, which is like that aesthetic. It's everything that I want. I'm not putting it on this TBR because it's coming out in the end of September, but maybe it will be on the October TBR because I did pre-order it and I want to read the books that I am getting in. So anyways, so this is like, again, like a gothic horror and it's like apparently like pretty grotesque, which like, I love that, sign me up. So Juniper and Thorn is actually a retelling of the Brothers Grimm, The Juniper Tree, which fun fact, I actually took a writing seminar in college because it was mandatory for all freshmen to take a writing seminar and my theme was fairy tales. We analyze all these different fairy tales and I did end up writing an essay on the juniper tree, which I need to like dig that out of my archive somewhere and reread that and also just like reread the story because it's not that long before I read this because I think it's gonna be really fun. Um, but I do remember really liking it. It was kind of one of my faves. So we have Marlinchen and her two sisters that live with their wizard father in a city shifting from magic to industry. And then her and her sisters are the last true witches. And basically they're kind of like a tourist attraction for the people in the city and she tries to like get secrets out of these people because her father is xenophobic and like won't really let her and her sisters outside. However, her and her sisters sneak out at night, especially to the ballet where she meets a ballet dancer that she develops feelings for. But as they sneak out more and more, like the threat of their father's rage increases. And while the city is kind of flourishing with this industry, there is a monster hidden in its depths born out of intolerance. So I think it's gonna be very interesting and obviously like a monster as born out of intolerance is obviously a very strong metaphor and I think it's going to be a very thought-provoking and evocative read and uh yeah I'm excited and I like gore and gruesome things and apparently that's what this book is. Okay so now we have House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson who is the author of The Witchling and uh yeah I mean do you see this cover? Do you see this cover? It's vampires. So in this one, we have Marianne Shaw who was raised in the slums and one day she sees an ad for a blood maiden to go north where the rich people drink blood. And there she kind of finds herself the newest blood maiden in the house of hunger and she gets swept up with the countess, um, Lisavette. Vampires, sapphic vampires, pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, this cover is everything. I just love gothic horror. I want to read it all. And here we have The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. And again, this one just seems really cool and it's compared to Mexican Gothic, which is one of my favorite, my favorite horror books. So, which also I need to read more is Silvia Moreno Garcia, but I heard all of her books are kind of different. So let me know which one I should read after Mexican Gothic. Anyways, so we have The Hacienda. I picked this one up as soon as I kind of like saw what it was about and saw it was compared to Mexican Gothic and then never read it because I suck, I don't know. Um, so we are in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence and Beatrice's father has died and so when the handsome Don Rodolfo Solazaro proposes to her she says yes despite rumors of what happened with his first wife. 
especially because she wants the security that his estate will provide. But Hacienda San Isidoro is not the sanctuary that she imagined. And basically, her husband returns to the city for work and as she's left alone, like all of these things start happening to her in the house. She feels like she's being watched, feels like she's being followed, like people won't come into the house at night. And what is like really happening? And uh, yeah, she also has a new book, which I might put that on my October TBR because there's still another month for spooky things. And that is all for my September TBR. I feel really excited about the books that I picked up for myself this month. All of these beauties, however, you know, I may diverge from the path, but it is what it is. I'm here to have a spooky gothic time this fall, and I can't wait. All right, so that's what I'm feeling. Let me know what you guys are feeling down below. Leave me a little spooky pumpkin, because we're getting into the spooky season, <laughs> and have some fun Reese books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.